It all started with a very fortunate phone call with Kyle Frayers and an invitation to go and tour their factory when I was down there for the Mass Timber Conference. And I made the comment, you know, I wish that we could just get these panels down to like an inch and a half. Because I think at an inch and a half, that would be in a price range that we would be able to have it make sense to use in residential construction on a much larger scale. And he literally got out his phone and he was like, yeah, I think we can do that. And I was like, really? And so immediately the wheels started turning. I was on the phone that night with Matt Reisinger and the client and said, hey, I might throw a wrench in this. Let's do a mass timber build. This is the Mass Timber Group Show. I'm Nick. And I'm Brady, and we talk to sustainable building experts. Today, we had the pleasure of talking with Trent Depp, the CEO of Decatur Buildings Construction. Trent and his team are experts in mass timber installation, and they have a passion for residential use, or as he calls it, mass timber for the masses. He and his team have been cranking out mass timber buildings, both large and small, and they've even been working with Freres on a new mass ply light framing system. Their flagship project is about to get underway, and it's set to bring mass timber costs in line with, or even outcompete traditional stick frame systems. If you're interested in residential mass timber, you can't afford to miss this conversation. One of my favorite parts was talking about Trent's new mass timber project with his GC, Matt Reisinger, from Reisinger Build. They are working together on a 9,000 square foot residential project with Frerez Wood and their LVL mass ply light frame system out in Dripping Spring, Texas. It is projected to be built in seven to 10 days. Decatur Building Construction is your go-to install company. It's exciting to hear that Trent recently made the decision to only build with mass timber moving forward. But before we jump in, if you like hearing sustainable building experts share their insights, stories, and experience, please hit that subscribe button. So with that, let's get into it. Trent, how do you go from hairdresser to heavy mass timber installation? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I've owned several businesses and, uh, the last business that my wife and I owned, we owned a couple of salons in Texas and I, I became a hairdresser because she was a hairdresser and we owned a salon and I didn't want to just sit behind the desk. And I actually enjoyed that, that industry quite a bit. Um, but my favorite part was building out the salons. And, you know, in retrospect, looking back at my other businesses, you know, I owned a bar in the stockyards at Fort Worth and, you know, my favorite part of owning that bar was building out the bar. And, um, so when we were building our house, uh, I built it myself. Um, my wife was like, you know, you really enjoy this. Why don't we take a look at doing that? And so, you know, we originally set out on this journey of being a builder to build post frame houses and agricultural buildings. Um, and post frame is, you know, uh, I call it another version of mass timber. Um, but you know, it's, it is a rudimentary way of putting up, you know, large posts and supporting all of your weight on the on the perimeters of buildings with girts and girts, horizontal girts, attaching things and, and trusses and a very cost effective way of building a, a structure, uh, it uses, you know, 20 to 30% less lumber than stick framing. And that was my whole, uh, motivation to build my house that way, because, you know, I wanted to find a stronger, more efficient way to use the wood. There's nothing that drives me more nuts than to see a, a modern construction site with a pile full of gunoffs that's going to a dump somewhere. You know, one of our last, uh, post frame projects that we did, all of the, the waste from the structure itself fit into the bed of my truck. So that was the extent of our cutoffs, you know, that includes all of the zip sheathing and and all of the, the framing it fit with the bed of my truck. So, you know, that's, that's kind of how I 
got into, into, uh, you know, this type of building, um, you go way back to like 98. That's what I had originally gone to college for was construction management, but I've always yeah. enjoyed building things. How long ago did you guys make that full transition? That was, uh, 2020. Before we move on real quick, I can't get over this. Cause you said you're in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, right? Technically we're in Decatur, but yes, outside of Fort Worth. So <laughs> I had my very first experience in, uh, for, at Billy Bob's. Not too long ago. You know, Billy Bob's, right? Oh, yes. You know the family that, that owns it now and the manager. Yeah, that, it's a great place. So for the public and for Brady, it, this is an, it's, it's a quote unquote, the world's largest honky talk. We well, saw bull riding, in-person bull riding, a concert all in one night. And it's at the same venue. And I highly recommend anybody, if they're out in Fort Worth at the stockyards, I did not know what I was getting myself into. We left very late with a three too many drinks and we just had an absolute blast. It's Billy Bob's was a, was a good time out there. The stockyards is a very authentic area of Fort Worth. It's been around for a really long time. Um, Billy Bob's has been around for a really long time. You know, it goes back to uh, that movie, Urban Cowboy, um, you know, with John Travolta um, and you know, it's, uh, it's a Fort Worth staple. You know, you definitely want to go and see that, but don't forget about the rest of, of the stockyard. My bar was at the top of exchange and, uh, exchange is the road that has all of the smaller hockey jobs in the, in the stockyards. And, um, it's a, it's a, it's a really neat place where you can see a lot of neat things and, uh, see a cross section of the of Americana that not a lot of people get to see in other parts of the country. Yeah, I was really impressed. So you did, a, that's right. You owned a bar up there too, huh? Yeah, we had a music venue at the top of Exchange. And um, that was one of my favorite things that I've done in my life was take a building that had not been a traditionally stockyards type of venue and convert it back into something that looked like it had been there for a really long time with all to, uh, to transition more into the the mass timber world you're you're doing a, a super cool um it's about was it eight thousand square foot nine thousand square foot uh mass timber residential space mm -hmm. and it, uh, let's let's unpack that a little bit more what comes to mind when you when we talk about that um collaboration you know i certainly didn't get to to where we're at on that building by myself you know that was it's the culmination of something up of stuff that i've been working on for the last three years um you know it all started with post frame and post frame has its limitations and you know namely it it, it still is using a lot of dimensional lumber and, you know, I wanted to try and get away from dementia lumber. Um, and so we used a lot of the principles from post train and a, a lot of the things that along the way people have helped me with, you know, to understand about mass timber it couldn't have happened without several people. So, you know, it all started with, um, a very fortunous phone call with Kyle Frayers and an invitation to go and tour their factory when I was down there for the mass timber conference. And we had already planned on doing a build and, and dripping sprays in a post frame style with um, Matt Reisinger. Uh, we'd already had the meeting. We were already, you know, probably 50% of the way through the design. And it started out as, as really a secondary house, not even the, a main residence. And then I met with Kyle and did a, a full tour of his facility on a Sunday and I made the comment, you know, I wish that we could just get these panels down to like an inch and a half, because I think at an inch and a half, that would be, you know, in a price range that we would be able to have it make sense to use in residential construction on a much larger scale. And he literally got out his phone and he was like, yeah. I think we can do that. And I was like, really? And, um, so immediately the wheels started turning. 
um, I was on the phone that night with Matt Reisinger and the client and said, Hey, I might throw a wrench in this. Let's do post frame, but not really. Let's do a mass timber build. It's not going to change the, the cost of the structure. Um, it's going to actually speed things up significantly. We might even be able to do it in like 20 days, the whole structure. And you know, that's changed significantly since then. And so I started hashing things out with him. Uh, you know, Matt Reisinger, of course, brought the whole project to the plate. And a client that, that is a fantastic client. They're, they're, they're very open with, with their um, early adopting of something that's never been really done in the United States um, in, in this fashion. Other mass timber houses have been built. But, you know, this is a whole new way of framing a mass timber house. Um, so, you know, if it weren't for the Prayers Brothers and that whole family and, and all of the work that their team has done there to help put this together and, and Matt Risinger and his whole team and Tim Hill, his partner, um, and the client especially is willing to, to, you know, give this brand new style of house a try. This is their residence. They're all in. It's not a small house. Um, so, you know, that whole collaboration has made it possible. Out of curiosity, how did you get it, uh, wrapped up with Matt uh, Rising Urge? And just for people to know, I mean, he's an absolute celebrity builder in a good way. I mean, you go to his YouTube, he's got uh, the build show. I mean, his personal profile has over a million subscribers. Did you just reach out and just kind of say, hey, this is who I am and let, let's talk more? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I did. You know, I, I started out like a lot of people. I was a total fan. You know, I, I, there was a lot of excellent content on the Build Show Network and on his YouTube channel, especially for, you know, building science and staying up with the most current technologies and, you know, efficient ways to build houses. And that's what I'm all about. Um, you know, a lot of what I, you know, a lot of our company started because of, uh, people like him and, uh, and, um, and R and R buildings with Kyle out of Illinois. He's a post frame builder. Um, you know, just starting to watch those and learn from them and then, and then put it into practice and do our research and our due diligence on their technologies and, and what they're doing. Um, and so. I noticed that they had featured one of Kyle's, um, builds on his channel. And I literally sent him a message with a picture of, you know, what we were doing and said, boy, it'd be nice to see some more post frame here in Texas. And he messaged me back and he actually reads a lot of his messages. I'm sure he reads all of his messages, but he messaged me back and, and we started to stay in touch and, um, you know, he, he, he would follow some of the things that we were doing. I'd send him updates and, you know, over the course of a year, a year and a half, uh, we, you know, at least developed a, a relationship to the point where, you know, he would respond to messages I sent him. And then all of a sudden he came up with somebody who had literally asked for a post brain structure. And, you know, so it's kind of like the definition of luck. Have you ever heard the definition of luck? Let's hear it. Where preparation meets opportunity. There you go. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's where preparation meets opportunity. So, you know, I had spent a ridiculous amount of time. I started my business in 2020. I had started researching post brain for my own personal house, probably in 2014. So, you know, I, I did a ridiculous amount of prep work to get to where I was. Um, and, and to build my own house. Cause I wanted my house to be like a tank. And it is, um, but you know, finally we, we were at the point where we were, um, ready to take on a build like that. And, um, and he brought us in and started us down that path. So that's how I got to know Matt. And that's how I, you know, I, um, I'm a firm believer of, uh, the Wayne Gretzky. I love quotes. Well, here we say a lot of quotes, uh, the Wayne Gretzky quote, you know, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. I never have any hesitancy in messaging somebody, um, you know, because you never know they, they might message you back, 
and it might be, you know, fortuitous for your future. For sure. Th so that, that mass ply light framing system that you guys are working on with Freris, you're going to use it on the kind of prototype, the flagship project. Is this something that you envision being like a scalable solution for residential use? Can you tell us more about the future plans? Yes. So not only, y y there's nothing proprietary about it. I'm not a manufacturer of uh, pre-made, you know, walls um, or houses. Um, you know, this is, this is a, a, a new type of, of framing based on a bunch of other old types of framing. So, uh, you know, it, it is something that could be used in everything from, you know, ridiculously large, expensive custom homes, as well as, you know, a home that's built for habitat for humanity. Um, you know, we, we wanted to develop something where we could bring mass timber to the masses, um, and not have it be an out of, an out of reach, you know, a uh, dream of using you know, max timber in a way, uh, that the, you know, the everyday joke could use on their house and it'd be, it could be used in part or, you know, like the project that we could be used in part. So like portions of a house or it could be used for the whole house. So you don't have to, I mean, it seamlessly integrates really nicely with, with stick framing because of the scale, you know, you, you aren't having to figure out how to put stick framing under a 12 by 12 blue lane. You know, you're, you're dealing with something that's maybe a little bit larger than the dimensional lumber that you use it. You know, um, best way to describe it is everything's, you know, pretty much a, an LVL panel, calm or beam. So if somebody wants to use this type of system, do they have to start with that from the ground up or is it pretty easy to kind of plug and play into existing, uh, designs? Yeah, so uh, we're working with a couple of architects and developers right now to see how it, it, it works with their existing um, schematic. So, you know, we could take an existing schematic and with not too much work, convert that over to, excuse me, um, convert that over to this framing system. You know, there's going to be some subtle differences. The wall thickness has changed a little bit. Um, not a whole lot. I think it, it's like three quarters of an inch. Um, you might have to work a, a little bit harder on the placement of your windows and doors because all of the gravity is carried in your columns um, on the perimeter. Uh, you will have some load bearing walls in certain instances through the middle, but you know, not everything has to be a perfect box. Um, you, you have the ability and versatility to do some other things. Um, it's certainly exciting on the roof structure because the roof structure opens up dramatically. So, you know, you go from even, even with the engineered trusses, you go from engineered trusses that are typically anywhere from 16 to 24 inches on center to engineered beams that are eight foot on center and hug the roof deck. So it opens up a lot of the design possibilities um for for that house and it gives you a lot more space in some areas that you typically would be losing a lot of space and you're saving quite a bit of time on the build i mean wasn't it projected the thing is going to go up in seven to ten days that's where we sort of landed on um yeah if everything goes right and it's not just the structure so um you know I should probably describe how a wall section looks. So, um, unlike a, a normal, a, a normal mass timber structure where you're setting, you know, all your vertical members and then attaching your beams and things like that, and this is going to be set up a lot more like a post frame build where we lay all of our vertical and our, 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 our gravity supporting beams, I mean, columns on the ground. And then we fly our panels in and attach those two panels there on the ground. From there, we route on our, we, we actually fab right on site our window openings and place our WRB and all of our window flashing and then install our windows right there. And then on top of that comes our insulation. And then on top of that comes our fur out strips. 
And then that whole thing gets stood up and that process should take between three and five hours per wall. Um, so depending on the size of the house, you know, in this case, and the number of walls, um, in this case, we're estimating that to get the whole building up to the point where we are putting siding on and a roof on, like a, the, the finished roof, the metal roof, uh, is going to hopefully take between seven and 10 days. Now it's our first time. It might take a little bit more than that, but there's a whole lot of planning that we've been putting in to try and make it as efficient as possible. And that's where you get a lot of the, the efficiencies is, is in the construction. Some of these materials are still going to be more expensive than the wood and the materials that you would put into a stick built house. But because you're going from eight week to potentially a two week or less build, you know, you, you're saving significantly in other areas. Are you able to talk a little bit more about the other hard costs? Like, uh, can you? You imagine this being comparable and competitive to traditional stick frame or traditional building? You know, we're, we priced it out as a traditionally stick frame house and, um, we're right in a very tight margin of what it would have cost for stick framing. So, you know, and then depending on the sophistication of the build, and this is a pretty sophisticated design, um, you know, the more simplistic the even less expensive it gets. So in this, in this build of dripping springs, you know, we have 12 foot sidewalls, you know, those are really tall sidewalls. And, you know, so if you scale this down to something, like, let's say a habitat for humanity house, everybody's kind of familiar with that, that size and scope of a house. Um, you know, you're talking about nine foot ceilings, you know, nine foot so sidewalls, you know, usually, you know, over, a, a regular shaped roof, not a lot of angles, not a lot of, you know, tricky bits. Well, you know, then you're talking about potentially getting into a, a less than type of situation where it's less than stick framing, um, because not only are you being more efficient with your wood use, but you're also being much more efficient with your time and you're eliminating drywall. Um, you know, drywall is. That, that bill doesn't have any drywall. There's no drywall in that entire bill. Um, you know, even if you want to use drywall because the way the panels are, you're not using half inch drywall, you're using quarter inch drywall. Um, you know, or you're just texturizing the panel itself. So, you know, it really depends on your finishes, just like stick framing. Where, you know, what's the difference between a, a house that's $10 million and a house that's $200,000? Well, size and finishes, that's, that's been location in, in many cases, but really as far as construction costs goes, it's size and finishes. So, you know, the, the framing system is the same, whether you're building a very affordable, you know, reasonably sized house, you know, or a tiny home versus if you're building a 10,000 square foot home, the system doesn't change. It's, it's all of the other things that change. So speaking about efficiencies and cost, we have inputs that go in when we're constructing the building and then we have, you know, outputs or continuing factors that we have to deal with, um, efficiency as far as heating and cooling and that kind of stuff goes. Can you tell us how those types of builds compete in those areas? Well, I mean, we don't have any hard data, hard data yet. Um, you know, it's in theory, you know, we've reduced the number of seams that, you know, you can get air leakage through significantly because. The panels that we're using aren't four by eight, they're, they're four by 32, they're four by 40, um, and they're inch and a half and not seven sixteenths. So, you know, usually when we're using zip or any other type of sheathing, it's seven sixteenths on the exterior sheathing. This is an inch and a half sheathing. So it's a much more sturdy wall and you get a little bit of, you get a little bit of the mass effect. I don't want to say that it's a true mass effect type of, you know insulator, you know, you, you not, you don't have five inches of wood out there, but you, you are getting a little bit of the mass effect. And then because we're using the whole perfect wall, right? The, the perfect wall methodology and the talks about continuous, um, continuous layers around the house. So, you know, we have a continuous layer of sheathing, you know, and that's all taped up and sealed. And then we have a continuous layer of insulation. 
we all, we insulate from the exterior of the house rather than interior of the house. So it becomes like a sweater on the outside of your house. And so because it's a continuous layer of insulation, you don't have any of that thermal bridging from the interior to the exterior that you would have in a, in a, in a normal house that's stick built with the, with the insulation in between the studs. You know, if you look at one of those on a, th on a thermal camera, you can see all of the thermal bridging throughout the entire house. You know, whereas something like this is going to be very insulated, you know, and it, it's even more so than the R value tells in as far as the story, because you don't have any of that thermal bridging that's, that's changing your all over effective R value. And I'm certainly not an insulation expert, but I, I, I've experienced enough and I, I see it enough and know that that system works very well. Um, and then, you know, whether you go vapor open or vapor close, that's really a bigger conversation that I'm not an expert in. Um, but you know, it's a very efficient, efficient to heat and cool system that we have then taken one step further with the mass twilight framing. Um, so hopefully when we do our blow door test and we, when we check out our, you know, how efficient everything is, it will align with the, what everything is saying on paper. Are you guys going to shoot for any sort of like passive house standards? Um, so passive house is a certification, you know, we can build as though we like to get that certification, uh, at the end of the day, that's going to really be up to the homeowner. If, if they want to pursue that certification, um, you know, the, there's a lot of back and forth with, between people that say, Hey, we're building a passive house. And, you know, we build, we build highly efficient houses, you know, if that's something specifically that we're going for, then we take the extra step, do that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a certification, just like any certification, you have certain requirements that you have to meet that don't always necessarily make sense for the end user. So in this, in this case, we're going to be building a very highly efficient house with some tried and true techniques and, and sealing that house up as tight as we can. And, um, in a very unique, with a very unique framing system. Um, but as far as, is it going to be a passive house? I, I, I don't know yet. Well, and it sounds like that you're also using some of the hardware and the fasteners with uh, Rotobloss. I, you know, last month or whenever it was, we we're having a drink with Hannes and, you know, is uh, one of his sales reps out here in Denver, uh, Tom. And he's huh? like, oh, okay, we're trying to get him on the podcast. And he's like, oh, you got to talk to Trent. We're doing a super cool, you know, mass timber, kind of a revolutionary style, you know, residential home out in Texas. And and then that's who kind of connected us. And we were pretty excited about that. But um, can you speak to some of like the hardware and like uh, working with like the Rotoblast uh, type of like fasteners? Or is there anything that you learned with that? Um, I, I just learned that Honest is a, is a really great individual. Um, and it's a great company to work with. They've been very helpful. Um, you know, there's a lot of unique things that we run into with this system. The panels are thinner. They're inch and a half. Well, everything that's made for panels starts at like that three panel or that three layer CLT size. So, you know, little things like that, um, you know, knowing which connectors will work for our beams that are scaled down. I mean, our beams are not, you know, the massive, huge beams. I mean, they're large. They're, they're certainly large by, by dimensional lumber stand, standards. We don't have a, a piece of dimensional lumber in the entire build. So there is no dimensional lumber. It's all Frere's lumber. The whole, everything, even the, the, the furring strips on the exterior that the siding gets attached to, that's all from Frere's. And, um, and I'll touch on that in a second. Um, but they have worked us through with the whole process and helped us with their engineers to make sure that, um, all of the different needs of the bill were met um, and were spec'd out. Um, and we must have probably spent, um, well, multiple phone calls and one epic long phone call 
just going over every last little detail from our WRB and make sure that that was spec right. And um, also keeping in mind that we're trying not to break the bank on every cor- every direction we turn. You know, we're trying to find an efficient, cost-effective way to spec out the system. And well, I really believe we've done that. Um, in some areas, we use NITs. You know, um, the majority of it's going to be screws from both of loss and a variety of, a variety of those. Um, but there were some unique things that we had to get, get through. Like how do you attach a furry strip through four inches of insulation? You know, which screw is going to be most appropriate for that to give us, you know, the strength that we need to, to support the roof, the, the, the metal roof. Um, you know, how do we limit the number of penetrations through, um, you know, how do we limit the penetrations through the panels so that we don't get as much air loss? Um, you know, just a variety of those things. The growth of Blast has been a really great partner and they've come to Austin to meet with Matt and myself and, and go over the build and, and they've been involved since, you know, since we decided to switch this to a mass timber build, they, they have been an integral part. So you're definitely doing some new, cool and exciting things in the residential space, but that's not the sole area that you guys work with. You guys are doing some bigger builds, uh, in the commercial sector as well. Can you tell us how you're kind of positioning your company and why people would go to Decatur buildings? So, you know, we've, we've, we've positioned Decatur buildings to, to be an install company. You know, I, I like building things. Um, you know, I, I, early on, I decided we, we weren't wanting to get into the design on the commercial side. We don't want to get into the design assist business. I think there's some companies out there that are doing that in a remarkably well way. Um, Carpentry plus, for instance, does an amazing job. Um, I know Kinsall does, um, there's, you know, companies. And I, I'm probably forgetting some, you know, structure craft or, um, or, you know, in, any of those companies are already out there doing an amazing job at the design assist, you know, portion, uh, what we want to position ourselves in is to be a, 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 a go-to install company, you know, whether it's for one of those companies or or directly to the GC. Um, we, we want to position ourselves to be, you know, really good at, at our installs and, you know, some of the way that we uniquely position that is, is, you know, we have our own steel fabrication shop. So, you know, any of the bespoke, you know, steel connections that need to be, that aren't, you know, off the shelf from a Roth of Wast or a Simpson strong tie or, you know, a Sherpa, um, you know. We're able to fabricate those, have them in our hands from, you know, the raw steel up to the install. Um, and then to take that one step further, you know, they're, you know, I'm a big fan of hybrid builds. Um, you know, all wood builds are amazing, but you know, I'd see hybrid builds as being something that's more palatable for a lot of GCs and a lot of developers as they're starting to dip their toe in the water of mass timber. Um, you know, and so being able to be versatile and install both the steel elements, the structural steel elements and the structural wood elements, um, I've seen as a pain point for a lot of GCs. A lot of GCs have a hard time coordinating, not a hard time. A lot of GCs um, find it difficult to coordinate the steel erection and the wood erection in many situations because they don't always move at the exact pace that they're supposed to delays happen. Um, and you know, being able to flow smoothly from one to the other helps eliminate some of those schedules. Somebody always ends up waiting and, you know, being able to flow from one into the other and back and forth, especially in some of these hybrid buildings, like the, like the building that we're working on, we didn't do the steel erection. An, an amazing steel erection company, Davis Erection, did the steel erection in a in a, a small in a portion of the of the wood erection um, on the project that we're working here in Omaha. Um, but you know, they have mostly 
um, steel columns through the interior of the building, but then on the entire exterior where it's visible are wood columns. And then it's a steel structure and a, a very typical, you know, uh, steel and concrete floor system. Now, you know, in a situation like that, if they were using a separate wood, you know, or mass timber installer, you know, you don't just do all the wood and then do the steel around it. it it's kind of like a back and forth game. Um, so, um, you know, that's where we want to position ourselves to either seamlessly work with a, a steel erecting company or, and, and come forward as a, as a united team or, you know, take on the whole scope of both of those, those installs, um, ourselves. So, you know, so far, you know, mostly what we've been doing is the fabrication. Um, but, uh, our, we have a project that will, we're almost ready to announce, um, coming up in Dallas, that'll be, we'll be doing all of it. We'll be doing the steel erection, all the welding, all the weld up steel elements, as well as all the mass timber elements, um, and the fabrication, of all the connectors for the whole project. So really it'll be a whole Cherokee install for us. Well, thank you for pushing the industry forward seriously in the residential space. There's a, a massive hole and a huge need to build like this much quicker, more sustainable. So with uh, Decatur Buildings, uh, you're trying on more on like a two to three to four year horizon. You know, I know you want to get more into mass timber, but what are you after next? What do you want to work, uh, work more into? So all we're, all we're doing here moving forward is mass timber. That's, that's the, you know, we, um, we actually, they're closing on our final true post frame building here in the next two, three months, um, that we're at, that we, we already have ready to go. Uh, but you know, I would say finding that nice mixture between our, our residential projects and our commercial projects and, you know, being able to, you know, further both of those is really where we want us, where I want to see you know, our, our company in the next, um, two to three years, you know, on the commercial side, you know, my goal is to, again, is to really be a company that, that provides services to other companies, you know, other mass timber companies, um, other turnkey companies. Um, you know, we've had a great relationship with Timberline so far. Um, what a fantastic organization, uh, you know, they, uh, that's, that, that's the type of, uh, dream, um, arrangement that we have where we don't do the design assist. They've done all of that work. You know, they present us with this beautiful turnkey package that, that we go and install and put up a great structure. Um, you know, that's the type of, of, of situation that we like to be in. Um, and, you know, so the difference between now and two to three years from now, I, I want to see, you know, us having more teams doing that same thing, you know, which means that there's more mass timber going on and, you know, hopefully a lot more residential mass timber going. On. And what made you choose to go only mass timber? What was the reasoning behind that? Woodworks. Woodworks.org, like the nonprofit yeah, organization. Yeah. And he'll, he, he will, uh, he'll kill me, but. Uh, Mark Bartlett, um, the whole reason I, I, I guess I never clicked on that. The whole reason that I went towards mass timber was because I was looking for a superior, um, column. And so I reached out to woodworks about glue lamps because I didn't know a lot about glue lamps. I wanted to learn more about it. And this was right around Valentine's day. And, you know, so we had a great conversation and he said, shucks, and it's too bad that you aren't going to be able to get to the mass timber conference here this year. And I said, when is it? And he's like, it's only in like two and a half weeks. And, uh, and I was like, oh, okay. And so we finished up our conversation within four hours. I was, um, I had my hotel booked, flight booked, and I bought tickets to the mass timber conference. And, and it really is a fantastic conference. I mean, it is absolutely amazing. Um, and so. Yeah, Woodworks is the one who really convinced me about the benefits of Max Timber and got me to go down that rabbit hole. And, 
you know, once we, we went down, I, I realized it would be advantageous and, and probably the, the better way to just focus on that, um, rather than trying to main, try to start that while maintaining an, a presence in, in post and agriculture or doing things like that, because we can accomplish everything we were doing there with mass timber, uh, at some point in time. And now that we've come up with, with the mass by light framing, um, we're able to do everything that we could do with post train, but in a mass timber style and, you know, really come up with a superior building, a significantly superior building. Yeah. The, just to touch on the international mass timber conference, it's a stunning event. That's the only reason why I'm in this world. I, my father-in-law, Arnie Didier is one of the original founders and owners with her partner. Yeah. Yeah, Arnie is the best. And along with Craig Rawlings and Tom Waddell, and I didn't know, I mean, I sell lumber by day as a wholesale lumber broker, and I had no no clue what mass timber was. And then, you know, me and Brady took the deep dive and, you know, this coming March, you know, will be our, our third year going, but we highly recommend, you know, there's 3000 people that show up and you just, it's a complete immersion into mass timber. So that's a, such a cool event to see. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. Yeah, it's uh, so you, it's a uh, it's a very neat place to to meet anybody who's anybody in the mass timber world. Mm -hmm. So we've all drank the mass timber Kool Aid, but if you were talking to somebody that hadn't heard of it yet, uh, what would you tell them? Ah, uh, the gateway drug. Okay, <laughs> so um, you know there there are some really cool things that I think are really starting to take off in mass timber that are going to take the, the non-believers and convert them to believers, um, you know, or the people that aren't using it really into people that are. Um, I think that, you know, there's a lot of people out there, oh, you got to do everything mass timber. It's got to be a whole structure. Well, I think that there's definitely some value engineering reasons to take a, a look at mass timber. Um, whether it's a, a stairwell core or an elevator core um, or, you know, a value engineering of floor system in a steel building, you know, um, you know, I, I just encourage people to check it out as an option, you know, and then a lot of times they do what we've done is they start to look into it and they're like, oh, this is potentially a viable option. And, oh, there's actually some benefits and maybe some savings if we do it this way. Or at the very least, it's going to look a lot better and it's going to be about the same cost. Um, sometimes it costs more. And, you know, that's the that's always going to be the challenge is, you know, how do you balance, you know, value? You know, is it just a dollar amount or is it the end result? Um, I have yet to hear people say, Oh, well, that looks about the same as a building that was built out of concrete. Um, you know, it, it, it's always something that takes people back Well, there, there's always a response. There's always something, you know, impressive, you know, they can't quite articulate it a lot of times, but there's a, there's a warmth, there's a, there's a ease of being within that space. Um, and certainly much more enjoyable working in the structure that's built out of mass timber versus the parts of the structure that are not, you know, it, it, it's, um, it's, it's just, it's a feeling that you are happy to be there. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm, I'm biased. I like wood. Um, but yeah, that, that's generally what I, when I tell people is I'm, I'm like, well, let's, let's take a look at what you're doing and see if there's any areas that maybe you could just tweak a little bit. Um, and one of the big ones is for, um, multifamily housing, you know, with this mass ply light framing, you know, we've come up with a, a system of beam trusses that price out less than an engineered two by four truss. And, you know, being able to install them in, in some of the benefits of using LVL beams and, and, you know, a system like that means you could also spread those trusses out a little bit farther and save on wood and, and save on space and 
increase, you know, some of your design possibilities. So, you know, I, I, I just start having that conversation. You know, usually it's like, have you ever heard of mass timber? And let me tell you about it. And then generally an hour later, cause I talk a lot, you know, we had some, of, some amount of education has been conveyed and then who knows where that ends up. Well, well, we need more advocates like you out there just spreading the good word. And that's half the battle. You go to any street corner or any mall in America, you ask a hundred people and good luck if one or two people even know about this, this thing that exists. So we're still on the tip of the spear and of the mass timber industry, which is really exciting. Uh, speaking about another mass timber project at 1501 Mike Fahey, the 1501 Mike Fahey building. What, who's the team behind that and what's been going on out there? Well, that is uh, the developer's noddle and the general contractor is Kiwit. So very large general contractor, very well-respected general contractor um, in the U.S. They have their hands in a lot of different construction areas. Um, and uh, that's a Timberline project. So Timberline did the turnkey on on the on the structure they did all the engineering and um all you know all of the the design assist um and then you know they contracted us for the install because timberline has so many projects going on their install comp crews are already doing a bunch of projects out there um i think there's three projects going on right now in nebraska as we speak this is the first um so that's exciting um but you know, that project is, is pretty cool because it's part of, part of it's a hybrid, but then the two structures that we were responsible for building are all wood construction. So it's wood columns, wood beams, CLT, um, uh, and they're, it's, it's like two separate two-story structures, um, that we were building all at the same time and we did it all in 14 days. So we'll be topping out tomorrow. Um, which is the 14th, well, uh, the east structure, the west structure, we topped out yesterday. And uh, so that's really exciting. We've got 10 guys up here building that. And uh, it's been it's been a challenge because the weather this time of year in Nebraska has been lots of rain and wind. And, you know, it, it hasn't always co cooperated with us. Um, but it's exciting because it's right across the street from Kiwit corporate headquarters. So, you know, it's real high profile and there's been a lot of people coming by and watching. It's like, anytime you turn around, there's, there's seven or eight people just sitting there watching you do your install, you know, which is, um, you know, a little bit of a, of a different situation. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been wonderful. And, uh, and Timberline had it all so well planned out, you know, from, from the very from the very beginning, you know, all of our trucks were sequenced well and, um, and, you know, their project management team and their construction management team has, has really just made it very easy for us to do our job. Um, because we don't have to deal with a lot of those peripheral things that Timberline is just taking care of. What was the size and scale on that one? I want to say it's like 17,000 square feet. Um, the, and it's two two story structures that attach to the larger structure that's also a hybrid wood and um, steel structure. Davis did the uh, the original install of that portion of the mass timber, and then we did these two out shoots. Um, they are each one of them is sixty by, want to say sixty by fifty by two stories. So we have two CLT decks on each one, the roof deck, and then the first and then the second story. Um, and then, well, uh, all wood, all blue lamb columns and beams. Was Vagen on that uh, project as well? Yep. Vagen supplied all of the CLT for that. And then uh, Timberline did all the glue lambs and glue lamb fabrication. They've got the most amazing um, CNC set up there. Um, they have a Hundager 2. So I don't know if you're familiar, but it's a really cool, big CNC. Um, you know, I want to say it's, it's like the largest in the U S and it's in it. Of course, I have to say that they are a, a Texas company. Um, 
right out of Bernie, Texas. They're also out of, out of Nebraska. The, the company has quite a long, um, impressive history. That was the, the Hundigger. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're a massive company. I mean, they're a, a going concern. They're kind of, they're, it's all machinery, right? And, and that mm-hmm. type of thing. Yeah. It's like the coolest CNC ever. Yeah. Who, who are you well, working with? Any other CNC manufacturers out there? <laughs> so far in my experience, that's been the neatest one to see. Who have you been working with at Boggan? Uh, so I'm not sure who the Boggan person was that ran that. Uh, Tom Bond, maybe? Well, no, t- that wasn't one of Tom's projects. Um, that was, uh, but Tom's a really good friend of mine. I can tell you who I worked with. I should probably know that. Tom's a good guy, though. He's, yeah. He, there, Vagen's growing quickly, though, too. I mean, you no, know, Vagen is a, a wonderful company. Uh, Russ has been one of my mentors. Um, you know, I've got the two Russes that have been so helpful in our, in our, in our whole process. Um, Russ Brotnick, Brotnov from Carpentry Plus has been there really anytime. Um, I've never had any questions about anything. And then, um, and then Russ Wagen, you know, he has, he has really helped me through my education. Um, Doyle, sorry. Um, helped me through my education in the fibers. You know, I needed, you know, I had a pretty good understanding of wood, but I have a much better understanding of wood after he's walked me through a lot of, a lot of the ins and outs of, wood fibers and pointing me in the right direction to get more information. Um, Doyle Kopka is the, uh, the, the person who's doing the bogging stuff for the builder's district. Okay. Oh, what, uh, the Selena police headquarters too, has got some mass timber going on in that. What comes to mind? Oh, with the not in Texas. It's Selena. Oh, it's Selena. Small, small, small no. town, Montana boy here. Yeah, if you get that right, I think there's been one other, um, one other law enforcement center built that I know of, but it was a public safety center, so they housed their fire department as well. So I think you know I don't want to make any claims, but I think this one of the first uh, police headquarters in the country that's all mass timber. Um, so that is a twenty-seven thousand square foot in the, in the mass timber portion. Um, build all on one story. Um, it's all blue lamb columns and beams and a CLT roof. Um, and then a beautiful that we're working on as we speak, um, mass timber entryway that has two, two story canopies. Um, that is just a really impressive, um, it's a really impressive build. You know, it's going to be something that they're going to be able to grow into. Um, the community in Salina is, is growing rapidly as are a lot of communities in Texas. And, you know, they had a lot of foresight to do uh, something this beautiful for, you know, one of their pieces of city infrastructure. Um, and we're working with a great GC there. Lee Lewis is very experienced in, uh, public works builds and, and, um, schools and, um, municipal buildings. Um, you know, they, they have you know, help tremendously on that build. Um, you know, it's been, a, it, it's always a learning process for any of these GCs that haven't done. I think they've done one other mass timber project, but it was, I think it was mostly heavy timber. Um, you know, so, you know, there's, there's always, always little things that have to be worked through and, and they have been, you know, very, um, open to hearing everything we have to say about, you know, the, the process. Um, but yeah, that building's going fantastic. There is a steel portion, um, that is in that building. So I guess technically it's a hybrid. Um, but if you, if you get a chance, look at the, the renderings, cause it's, it's all glass around the outside. So you see every bit of the wood. Um, so I'm really excited to see that one finish up so that I can walk through it, you know, as a finished building. So you've been a part of some pretty cool buildings just in like the three short years that you guys have been doing as a company from big commercial stuff to innovative stuff in the residential industry. 
out of all of the things that you've been a part of, and let's even take this conversation back 10, 20 years, what are some of your more, uh, what are some of the compliment, the accomplishments that you're more proud of? Oh man, that's an easy one. Uh, my kids, you know, everything I, everything I I've done professionally is cool. I mean, I, I, I think I've done some really cool stuff professionally. You know, I, I, we didn't even touch on the fact that I was a cop for like nine years. Um, you know, I was a deputy for Tarrant County in Texas. Um, but you know, I would, I would say just, you know, getting to experience the raising my kids through all of this and, and showing, giving them a bunch of different experiences as, as, as I have, you know, developed professionally. Um, you know, that's probably my, my biggest accomplishment is my kiddos. Everything from my as little a, one years old up to my oldest at 25. As uh, so Nick is expecting her, his first kid and my wife and I are family planning right now. What advice would you give uh, to mm -hmm. business owners in this boy situation? Girl. We just found out it's a little boy coming February 4th. Okay. Well, my first thing is you need to go to Amazon. <laughs> you know, I should get like some sort of links and get paid on this book. <laughs> Um, you need to go buy, it's a book called the dangerous book for boys. Okay. And everybody who I've ever suggested that to that goes and buys it within a year or, you know, within a very short amount of time is like, this was the best thing I've ever bought. And it's something you're going to use for the next decade. Really? So it's like nine bucks. Okay. Hardback. It's what, a hardback what, and it's nine bucks. What pops out to you about it? Um, it's like all the stuff that I learned as a kid that um, was good for girls too. Uh, but there's also a partner book called The Daring Book for Girls. Wow. Uh, it's all the stuff that kids don't learn anymore. Like there's a chapter on Morse code. Mm -hmm. like, who wants Morse code anymore? Um, you know, it's a bunch of little chapters of things that every kid should get a chance to experience, you know, how do you build a go-kart, you know, you know, how do you build a tree house? Um, you know, what are the constellations? And I forget what all the chapters are. Cause there's two, I have, I have the, the secondary book too, the even more dangerous book for, for boys. Um, but you know, it, it, it helps you remember a lot of the things that you did before, you know, these were in everybody's hands. Um, and you know, it, it, it inspires moments that are, um, priceless. So, you know, when you start seeing it, you'll see what I'm talking. Yeah, I'm excited. I'll definitely pick that one up. So speaking of said you were having a girl, I was a hairdresser. Um, I would say the, one of the important things, and this is for you, if you have a girl, um, I think every dad should learn how to braid hair. Nice. Check. Every dad should learn how to braid hair because at some point in time, your daughter isn't going to want to play with you and, and your daughter isn't, isn't going to necessarily want to talk to you because, you know, that's what all teenage girls go through. And it'll always be an excuse for you guys to sit down and do something. That's cool. That's, that's meaningful. So speaking about different books and, uh, but you've already listed one. So is there any other podcast? shows, documentaries, a course or something that opened up your eyes, maybe in the mass timber world or the building or construction world? You mean other than the mass timber group podcast, right? <laughs> I love this. That's, right. That's absolutely right. <laughs> um, honestly, I, I would say other than the mass timber group, um, podcast, you know, everything Matt Reisinger, you know, he has the build show network, uh, website. They put out, I think it's 12 videos a week now. And it's some of the top architects and engineers and builders in the country. And it's all focused on building science. Um, and his YouTube channel is a partner with, you know, goes along with that. But, you know, if there was a single place, if you were a builder, specifically a residential builder, but so much of it applies to commercial builds as well, um, it would be the Build Show Network, most definitely. Um, just the information and the level of expertise of the, of the people on there is just 
second to none. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Nick and I have both uh, turned to that show for resources multiple times. Um, shifting from books and podcasts over to the people world, do you have any mentors or people that have inspired you in the industry that you could look up to or point other people to? Well, um, I mean, the first one in the build, on the building side, um, probably be my grandfather. Uh, you know, he was, he was an engineer from MIT and uh, a structural engineer and he ended up building, um, a lot of amazing things, but specifically nursing homes, uh, he helped innovate with that. Um, but you know, more recently, you know, there's guys like Matt Reisinger. Um, I'd mentioned Russ from Carpentry Plus and Levi, his brother. Um, they're just fantastic. You know, I follow some people that they don't probably even realize that they're, you know, mentors, but, um, you know, Kyle from r and Buildings, um, just because I think that he has some really unique uh, perspectives on building. Um, he does just post brand building though. Um, but you know, yeah, I mean, uh, other than that, you know, the, the rest of the people are, are just everybody I come across, I try and, I try and learn from. So, you know, it's probably too many to even remember all of them. Um, but you know, of late, I've been learning a ton from Tim Hill who you know, it has nothing to do with the building side of things. It has to do with the business side of things. Tim Hill is Matt Risinger's partner. <laughs> I'm just having a better understanding of as you're built, as your construction business scales, you know, some of the things that need to be put into place to make sure that that goes smoothly. And, um, you know, he has been a tremendous resource through that. He's been building houses for 40 years, um, you know. I, I, I joke. I think he's like Naldi. He's not though. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll probably watch this. No, um, no, Tim, Tim has been fantastic, you know, and, and all that's attributed to Matt and making that an introduction and just sort of bringing me into that hemisphere of people. What do you wish more people knew about mass timber? That it existed, you know, um, you know, like Brady was saying, you know, one of the biggest things is I have to explain to everybody what mass, tim not everybody, I have to explain to a lot of people what mass timber is before we can even start to have a conversation about what I do. You know, I start explaining to them, yeah, they have these panels. They're like, they start at four inches thick. They can go as much as, you know, 15 or 20 inches thick. And they're like, eight foot wide. Sometimes they're four foot wide. Sometimes they're 12 foot wide by as much as 60 foot long. And that's just the panels. You should, you know, when we start talking about glue lambs, it could be, you know, the arch to a whole stadium. Um, and that's all wood, you know? And I, I think that sometimes people look up at that and they think that it's steel that has wood on it or that it, it just painted to look like wood. Um, I mean, I've heard those, um, so, you know, I just, I would love for more people to know that it, that it existed so that, you know, they could start exploring, you know, whether or not it would fit in different types of builds. What do you think that everybody listening, listening could do to help? Start telling everybody, you know, about it. I mean, specifically the building world, you know, I, I run into a lot of of, of a large variety of different trades, you know, and I think that the more, the more we expose trades and architects and engineers to it, I think architects and engineers have known it's, it, it, and known about it for a while, you know, uh, whether or not it's, it's a pursuit of theirs. Um, but you know, one of the big, the big holdups is, is that there's still a lot of trades that need to learn about. You know, plumbers, electricians, they become more comfortable working around it. Um, even steel right here is, you know, it, 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 this, the wood should be viewed as an enhancement to their, to their structures, not as something that's trying to replace them. You know, steel's not going to go anywhere. It's too large of an industry. It's in, the, and if we were to replace all of the steel structures with wood structures, then we wouldn't have enough. I mean, that's just the reality of it. Um, 
you know, wood is sustainable, but it doesn't mean it's unloaded, you know? So, um, just talking to any, you know, anybody watching this or people in the industry, most likely. So, you know, just continuing to get out there and talk and introduce them to woodworks, get that, you know, information about the, the different conferences that are out there is, you know, the international mass timber conference is, the, you know, the granddaddy, but there's other ones out there. I'm going to one in, in Washington, D.C. in September, the Green Bill. Um, and then you guys have a conference, right? You, coming up in 2024? Yep. We're looking forward to around the June time frame. We're, we're getting excited about it out here in Denver. Me too. You know, anytime that I can get around more like-minded people to see what we can do to advance this industry, the better. Absolutely agree. Uh, before we ask our last question, where can people connect with you or learn more about your business? Um, it's real easy. Uh, DecaturBuildings.com. And the number on there, that's myself. All right. So, like I said, we're lean and mean. Um, not so mean, but we're lean. Uh, I mean, we, we try and, and be very nimble as a company. You know, um, people deal with me directly. Um, I'm on the job site building as well as, you know, managing the projects and, you know, doing, you know, running the business. Um, you know, I'm not the type to sit around and not be involved. Um, you know, as far as, you know, one thing I would really like more people to contact me about is on the, the mass supply light framing, you know, that is not my proprietary product, you know, or, or system. I'm happy to tell anybody everything I know about it. Um, if people want help, you know, and, you know, where do they go to convert their schematics or start, at, you know, looking at the design process, you know, it's a very simplistic set of, uh, rules, just like in stick framing, um, you know, and then if they're wanting something more sophisticated on the residential side, we do do design assist. So, you know, we have the engineers that specialize in that we have the resources and a lot of the, the specialized information that'll help make them smooth their process. But, um, but yeah, decaturbuildings.com is plural. Fantastic. I will definitely send people there and we'll link to it in the show notes. So last question, if you had a magic wand, you can change one thing about your industry. What would it be and why? I don't know if I could change one thing about our industry. You know, I love our industry, you know, um, I would say if I could, it wouldn't be about the mass timber industry. Cause I think the mass timber industry is actually, you know, a pretty open, inclusive and, um, very, you know, they're growing so quickly. I would say if I could change one thing about the construction industry, I would say, you know, that. It would be nice to have more people start to have an open mind to using mass timber in ways that they haven't ever used, you know, before, um, or exploring the use of mass timber in their existing builds, especially with like multifamily, because most of those, those construction companies, they've been building apartments the same way for decades, you know, and they're very comfortable and it's, you know, they're very, um, efficient at building those apartments in, in the multifamily structures. Uh, I think there are even better efficiencies that, that can be incorporated in what they're already doing, you know, by in, incorporating some mass timber elements. Now, I don't know, you know, if it's necessary needing to be all mass timber elements, but certainly to incorporate some. Well, we encourage everyone to follow you on LinkedIn as well at Trent Depth with a B. It, you do a really good job at sharing all your pictures and, and updates to your projects and whatnot. So just, I think that right there, just spreading the awareness of like how these projects get topped out because they move quickly and it's, it's just a, a brand new emerging industry that we're, you know, right there at the tip of the spear. And so it's just exciting stuff. We'll surely be running into you uh, at the next Mass Timber event. And it was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.